All right, next we're going to have Luca Ogiano. He is a PhD, <coughs> excuse me, he's a PhD with a master degree in aerospace engineering and aerodynamics background, currently active in the fields of wind energy, sports technology, surfboard design, textile aer aerodynamic, aerodynamics, excuse me, and performances and building aerodynamics. He is also a CFD and wind tunnel expert a low drag, high performance skin suit design specialist with extensive experience in fabrics development and design. He is also CEO of Nabla Flow, which is a company uh, that is building CFD tools for sports and buildings. Uh, and Luca is also involved in helmet designs, aeros, aero suits design, damped floating substructure for offshore wind turbines, high performance surfboards, and aero suit for track and field sprint races. I'm excited to hear from him. I haven't formally heard him speak yet, so I'm really excited. So let's give it up for Luca. Thank you very much. Okay. You'll be reading a lot about me. <laughs> and all the information, but now the internet is like full of information. Yeah, I just say to Two words about myself. I've been working for about 15 years now with professional athletes and professional sports, mostly with the Norwegian Olympic Committee. Uh, I've been working with them in a mix of wind tunnel testing, product development, so we've been uh, doing skis for them, doing the suits for them. I think we managed to gather a overview of 65 medals and 45 of them were gold in the projects I was involved in. And in the past five years, I've been working with the professional second team, Team Sky, which now evolved in Team Ineos, developing both helmets and suits for them, using both wind tunnel testing and CFD. And uh, in my career, I've been also working, been working as a shaper, and I've been shaping one board. <laughs> and it took a long time to do it together with Bo Young in Australia, was there visiting, uh, visiting them uh, two years ago, no, one year ago. So I have a uh, long experience also as a ship. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a little bit what we do for the, for the cycling team. So these are two simple CFD simulations that I've been doing for them. One is for uh, helmets, so we visualize the flow in the helmet and we are able to optimize. You will think how much does a helmet, uh, does a helmet count? Well, it's about 3-4% in terms of drag on the total athlete. So you can either win or lose a race by doing that. And also we've been working a lot with pacing strategies. So which athletes will put first or second while they are going in a team trial course. And within this work, I've been actually working as well with, with uh, Cycling Australia for some time. Uh, Two years, two or three years ago, where we been working a little bit with suits, and I initiated the projects where they develop their own suit, which I'm going to use now in the Tokyo Olympics. I think one of the most successful projects that we had with the cycling team was to develop uh, uh, this suit, which is called the Vortex suit. You might check it on the net. So I've been the leading project and an innovator here. And what we did was to place this type of structures on the arms, and by doing that, we were able to reduce the drag by yeah, five, six percent. Not banned, but that was actually a great accomplishment. I mean, something that has been banned, it was kind of a big achievement. But when it comes to surfing, what is my view or my vision? Uh, I'm a surfer myself, I'm not a good surfer, but I've been surfing for, for quite some years up in Norway. I live in Norway, so very cold waves, harsh environment. But as an engineer, I would like at some point us to move away from a geometrical quantity, so defining a board in terms of its shape and more defining a board in terms of its uh, performances. And this can be damping, like Mark said, or it can be a lift and drag, or it can be lift and drag distribution on the board. So uh, this is something that is really happening, and it happened in other sports, and I see that happening slowly uh, also in surfing, especially now that there are wave pool available, there is uh, possibility to not to handshake boards anymore, but to draw boards, test them before you are even shaping them so you can, in a way, estimate the performances. So you can see especially professional athletes in the future uh, picking their boards based on the conditions, not only based on their feelings, but based on results that are available. Let's say, shopping, maybe you want to have a board that have a little bit of more of that. Now I'm like just putting some things there, but it is possible. 
So what is CFT? It's a lot of equations that are solved in a very complex way and it takes a lot of time. I'm not going to go through the math, but it takes time, it takes time to set it up, it takes time to solve it. What can we do? This is a cool video that I've been doing a few uh, days ago. When I saw this car came out, I was like, wow, this looks kind of, kind of pretty cool. Uh, probably all of you have seen the new Tesla car. This is the, the, the new Cybertruck car, which is a direct competitor of the F-150 car. So it's more or less in the same, same range. And it looked pretty bad in terms of aerodynamics. Like you, you see all these kind of square shapes, and you might think that it doesn't work as well, but actually it has about 50 or 60%, depending on how you consider drag, less than the F-150. And that's something that you can do, for instance, with systems. You can play around and try to understand how things, how things are going. If we go even further, you're able to visualize the pressure so you can understand also what's going on on these cars. So it's pretty bad here, but actually you have the flow which is wrapping right quite well on the rest of the car, especially here on the top where you will think the flow is separating. It's actually not happening, so I'm pretty sure that they've done their own work when they designed the car. And they have not done a bad job at all, at least comparing it with their uh, direct competitors. But let's move a little bit into surfing. I'm not really go deep into all the things that uh, uh, can be done, but I just want to say what my approach has been. At the beginning, I was just simulating a fixed board, so a fixed board with like some water sliding under the board. Then I started to say, okay, I want to move this board. So I found out a methodology where you could really perform a maneuver still on a flat surface. And then I was like, no, I want to have more. I want to have a wave simulation and I want possibly to move the board into that simulation and at some point I will also like to have that board moving based on the athletes or based on the surfer uh, push or action on the board I'm not there yet but I'm out of the way so what you do is you divide this, this uh, domain into small cells millions of cells and you have to solve the equation that I showed you uh, for all these cells so it takes a lot of time in order to so now I'm going to drive you a bit into the process that I've been going, going through and I will show you some of the videos of what is possible to do. This is a direct comparison between two boards. Here you have the flow which is coming from this direction and the board is just changing angle, changing angle, constantly. And you're able to visualize both pressure and friction on both boards simultaneously. Here it is not showing very well but we have forces in the three directions, you have moments in the three directions, so you are able really to compare the two boards and understand how different shapes are uh, affecting lift and drag or side force on the boards. From there I moved to say, okay, I want to start playing a little bit more around, I want to have uh, with a simulate stall, I want to understand what is happening when you are stalling uh, with your board. Uh, again, you have to think this as into a process that I've been through. So you have, in general, if you have a board sliding here, you are more or less in a paddling condition. Uh, you have these two boards that are generating here. You have the pressure which is fixed, almost uh, three quarters of the board. And suddenly when you go into stall, which is gonna be more or less soon, I guess, in uh, two, three seconds, you will see that these two vortices are completely disappearing. Your, your drag is increasing, so you are slowing down. So what I want to say here is that you can visualize things that you, you can think with your mind. You know what is happening when you are stalling the board, but you don't really know what is exactly happening. And see, I did a fantastic thing to show you how these things can be uh, um, visualized, modified, improved. When I was saying, when I was talking about. Um, about the possibility to add uh, to add different type, for instance, of surfers or, or uh, weights, for instance. Here is three, three stand-up paddle boards. They, they're moving side to side. So here I'm simulating really the side to side movement on the paddling. So here if there are forces applied to these boards, and you can see that they move side to side. And I'm increasing, uh, I'm increasing the weight. So this is the first step where I say, okay, I can apply forces, maybe I can have even a surfer at some point, uh, at some point uh, uh, acting on the board instead of uh, uh, applying a prescribed motion. And you can do multiple things. For instance, here you have, you have a paddle paddling on the water, so you can even design a better paddle for standard paddling. Or in this case, we have a, a 
we have um, a foil. So you have here the lift of a drag. Now the foil is lifting up, and you will see that once the foil is out of the water, you will have a much better lift of the drag, meaning that you are generating much less drag with almost the same amount of lift. Uh, again, imagine foil design, you can design a better foil that can have much better performances. But lately I've been thinking, I want to add a wave into this, into this whole uh, process. So I started thinking about, okay, what kind of wave should I choose? And I said, the way a lot of movies are about Chopo. So I say, okay, I try to use Chopo and I try to estimate the peeling speed and the advancing speed of the wave, which were about seven meters per second for advancing speed. And the speed, the peeling speed was in the range of uh, 12, 10 meters per second. I tuned the, math the, the mathematry so that the, uh, the wave had the shape that I wanted to aim, that I wanted to have. And then I ended up uh, with this. So here we have a wave which is breaking, we have a board which is sliding on the wave and while the board is sliding on the wave we are able to measure the pressure on the board, the pressure on the fins, we are able to estimate how each fin, how each single fin is acting. I'm going to show multiple videos of this so you have a better view. Uh, again the board is sliding on the wave here, here you can also see the vorticity which is causing the foam ball inside and then you see the board sliding, sliding in the way. You have a view from the surface, per surface perspective, so you can see the different pressure here on the fins, acting also a little bit of pressure there on the board. So you can imagine that what can be done here. I don't, I'm not posing here a solution, but more a, I'm opening a door or I'm like knocking on a door say, this is possible. There is a bit of effort to be done, but these things are possible now. It's something that 10 years ago was not even uh, thinkable. Here, for instance, you see what, how the three things are reacting while the board is sliding in the wave. So you have the central fin, the crest side fin, and the crest side fin, trough side fin, and the central fin. And actually, the, 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 the fin which is taking the beating is the trough side fin, which is the one on this side, which is not what I was expecting. I would have expected that would have been the fin towards the wave side to be the side that the fin is taking. So it's, uh, there's a lot of things that can be uh, seen and visualized, at least in terms of drag. And here you see the board from uh, underneath while it's sliding in the wave. And again, you can see the pressure under the board. You can understand again how each fin is really active. So in, in principle you could redesign a board or you could have 20 different digital wave where you could implement or try to check or test different boards on 20 different waves. So yeah, where's the future in my ideas? Having programs that are able to simply um, design so not simply, it's kind of a complex process, but one thing is to use programs like one that we in, we in engineering use, like SolidWorks, and another thing is to use programs like AccuShaper, which are kind of tuned for surfers. So coupling those kind of programs with CFD in a more direct way than what we have now will increase enormously the possibility of more design. Coupling CFD plus FEM, FEM is finite element analysis, means that what I can simulate in the fluid, I can also simulate in the structure. So all, everything that Mark has been showing you as a test can also be simulated with programs that are able to estimate that dumping of the board, that uh, type of rigidity or stiffness of the board. And I see that coming in the future. And these two can be coupled. So you can have a wave like the one that I show you with a, with a board that is moving on that wave or flexing on that wave possibly even having the surfer applying some forces to that board. And of course, you can use this type of tool also to create wave pool, to generate better waves. How much the bathymetry, what kind of bathymetry, what kind of bottom do I need to uh, make in order to produce this type of waves in a wave pool? Kelly's later have been doing that. I know they've been using similar software to the one that, I've, uh, that I'm using. That's 
it's incredible that you don't have to build a web tool before knowing that your web tool is going to work. You can check it beforehand. And of course, you can have web optimized boards. Because by having different types of ways, you can maybe have also boards that are optimized for that specific type of web. And artificial reefs as well. So there is, uh, I'm done. So there is a lot of uh, things that can be done, but uh, I see a very bright future in general for the sport of surfing. So there are, in this specific moment, there is a synchrony of uh, uh, combination of events that are, everything is at the right pace. Surfing is getting into the Olympics. Wave pools are popping up all over the world. So there's going to be an enormous amount of surfing. <laughs> like it's going to grow as a sport exponentially. There is technology available that, for instance, these CFD simulations that I showed you, 10 years ago, you will have had to rent a supercomputer facility somewhere in order to be able to run the simulations. Now we have our own cluster, but it's something that is not that expensive. And then there is a the cloud, so you can run them in the cloud. Even at your place, if you, have, if you are good, there are freeware software now that you can use. So there is a combination of technology available, interest for the sport, and even if there has been a lot of work throughout the years, it's still a complete virgin field. If I see cycling, which is where my main expertise here, and surfing, in terms of equipment, amount of money, amount of time invested, the difference is enormous. So the level where cycling is compared to surfing in the, when it comes to equipment is enormous. And I can see surfing catching up really fast. So there is a bright future when it comes to implementing engineering or research tools into surfing in general. Web design, web pool design, surfing design, and web pool design in general. This is it from my side. Any questions? Because last time we kind of <laughs> skipped the questions. Any questions about that last speech? afterwards where we have CFD simulation coupled with field testing and you will see that the results are actually matching. What I see CFD for is more of a design tool so I will see it in the future being implemented in the design process and a knowledge gaining tool so to understand what is really happening, what is the physics, what are the physics that are generating, for instance, a good or a bad shape, a good or a bad fin, a good or a bad board. How will this be applied? In cycling, it has been applied because it's a little bit easier, because you won't just want to reduce the drag. In surfing, I can see that applied by defining the properties of a board, meaning that instead, in my mind, at some point, instead of choosing a Six zero with this thickness and this width and this shape, you will choose a board that has this type of, of uh, lift distribution, this type of drag distribution, and this depth. For instance, this is how it works in other sports, and I can see surfing getting there. And the tools that we have will be able to give this information to the surfers, to the shapers, to whoever eventually needs this information. So, a little bit of design, a little bit of engineering quantities related to the, to the boards that we just now use as a geometrical thing. Right, let's give it up one more time for Luca. Thank you.